Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Corey, of course, I'm sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's happening, brother? Nothing, man. I'm excited, dude. I, I I'm excited that like at least in the DC area, like spring is here and like it, it, it finally feels like uh, it, it's gonna stick this time, dude. Oh yeah, you know when it when it's raining and it's still kind of warm outside, you know it's spring's here. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, you know, you know the good weather's coming. Yeah. Uh the last few days, the sun and and mid seventies. Yeah, I feel like I'm in uh, maybe San Diego or something. Dude, don't say that because uh, I'd love to move. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to move to San Diego. I was uh, I was in San Diego when I was a kid, and like yeah, I was too young and too dumb to kind of like take advantage of it. But you know, now as a as an old fella, I would love to go back to San Diego and spend some time. Dude, I, you know, like because we drove across across country as kids, and uh, you and I, and uh, and there's so many things I would have done different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ain't kidding, man. You know, because you think back, it's like, man, we didn't enjoy anything. We just, we had a destination. We were hurrying to get to that destination. I mean, we had fun, but we didn't appreciate the journey. You know what? That I think that sums up childhood. We're so worried about the destination that we don't enjoy the journey. You know, uh, I, think that, I think that kind of defines like the entire uh, 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 childhood, you know. But I'm enjoying enjoying this journey with you right now in uh and especially in 70 degree weather <laughs> yeah you ain't kidding uh i enjoy this journey with you too man it's been it's been incredible um it's been it's been a wild story we can get into that a whole nother time yeah we'll talk we'll talk with our guest today if he wants to hear about <laughs> it um so listen so our, our guest today like i'm super intrigued by because i mean they've been on our radar for probably just about over a year and to kind of watch and i ran into them at abs chicago and to kind of watch the growth that's happened um in the last year is incredible and and i'm always i'm always intrigued by somebody that has a that has a dream that has a passion that has a whatever and is be able and to be able to like make it real and then watch it grow you know yeah. anytime so cool. somebody has they're innovative right they take something and, and and innovate and 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 create something to to not only to enhance the industry and, and to enhance hairdressers and especially allow them to make more money because they got more time now but mm -hmm. uh just just to be innovative in this industry and and, and making it come true is is pretty fascinating it, it is and i i have a couple uh well we'll get into that i'm like <laughs> i'm not gonna bore anyone here and i, and I don't want to set our guests up to uh, think of an answer because i'm gonna put them on the spot a little bit but um but but uh so our guest today is Ben Bar Barkworth. Thank you very much, Ben Barkworth. And uh, Ben is the founder of, of Fast Foils. And if you haven't gotten the chance to play with Fast Foils, they seriously are a game changer. And um, I've had the opportunity to play with it, and and I, I, I they're just awesome. It's a it, it's a different experience um when you're using foils. But uh, but you know that the, that'll be in the story. Ben Ben's been in the industry for a minute, so uh, we'll kind of get into that, and then we'll we'll talk about Fast Foils and and. and what that's all about yeah just watching this company grow like you said from you know when we first met them and uh until what where they are now and it's just fascinating because i guess when you have a product that that does what it's supposed to do i mean you know right. it, it it should you should grow like you are yeah, yeah yeah right yeah yeah there's no doubt should we get in yeah let's do it mr ben barkworth welcome to your day off i almost said welcome back welcome welcome to your day off bud thank you thank you so much for having me uh it's so exciting uh and as uh, an entrepreneur, we don't really get days off, but uh... <laughs> we feel that we know <laughs> it's for everyone that's listening, Ben. It's, yeah, it's for, exactly. You know, the people that are listening, but but hopefully there's some entrepreneurs listening and they can uh, they can get a little inspiration um um from 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 this conversation. So Ben, where are you from? So I'm in Toronto, but I'm originally Toronto. from originally from England. So I was uh, born in Leeds, and we moved to Toronto in '93. How old were you then? Ten. Oh, okay, awesome. Because you've yeah. completely lost that like a uh, heavy British accent. Depends how many drinks I've had, but then it comes out. But... <laughs> <laughs> Why does that happen? 
<laughs> I think I'm way more Marylander, you know, after yeah. drinks. Yeah. Than... Isn't that funny though? Actually, we know people too that like aren't even British, but you know, the couple of drinks that they have, they'll cut, they'll kick into a British accent. I think a couple of drinks just brings your your child inner child back out because you know some people throw temper tantrums or get mad and you know it's like <laughs> but they bring out that old 10 year old accent <laughs> some people relax a little bit more yeah, yeah for sure for sure so uh that's cool how did you so you've been in the industry for a while then right so it's not just like a, a manufacturer but but you're you've been in the industry yeah, so I, I've been in the industry for 13 years. Um, I'm at my home right now, uh, home as in Just Be Salon uh, in Toronto. So I've uh, been in the industry for 13 years. Uh, I still work behind the chair four days a week. Uh, so I, you know, I'm, I'm hands-on still uh, working with clients and celebrities and um, working with my team in the salon. I, I love the logo uh, of Just Be Salon. You could... You know, Thank people you. who are listening, you know, you, obviously you can watch the podcast too and you'll see the, on the Spotify. It's pretty cool. But how did you end up finding the industry? It's very interesting. So um, being a young adult, um, I was I, I was in the closet for, for a long time. And uh, as a, a, a kid, I was always told, oh, you should get into the industry, you should get into the industry. And I moved from Leeds, which was, you know, a big metropolitan city and in the UK to a very small country town in Toronto, uh, outside of Toronto. And I was always didn't want to be that stereotypical person. I didn't want any flags to go off being in the closet. And so I always pushed away from it. And I was actually in hospitality first. Uh, so for- yeah, Cause there's no 20- gay kids in hospitality, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I, I was in hospitality. I loved it. Uh, and I think it's really important what you can bring from hospitality into the hair industry um, with the guest experience and the experience within the salon. Um, but I was working at, at the, in the restaurant and I was just like, I don't do this anymore. Like this is just the, the hours are hard. You know, it's hard on the body. Not that the hair industry isn't, but um and it, it was one of my uh friends at the time was just like i'm gonna go to hair school and it was literally like i'm gonna go with you mm. and i was and i remember calling my parents they're like you're gonna go to hair school and i was like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a go like i had never picked up a comb i've never picked up a brush i remember the first day and we got put in for a mannequin having to do a blow dry and i was like i have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to give it my, you know, it's my second uh, career. And I was like, I'm going to really hard and focus on this. Uh, and I'm going to prove everyone wrong that I can do it. Uh, and here we are 13 years later, um, owning a salon and running a, a foil company that is changing the industry. Well, obviously, I mean, you, you, you have style. I mean, you have, uh, you have a cool look. You have a cool haircut. I mean, you know, so there's got to, there had to have been something inside that kind of, unlike Corey and I, you look at us, I mean, we don't have, there's no, nothing. Nothing that says hairdresser. Right. Yeah. (laughs) You know, although we've been in it for 30 years and, uh, you know, and and it's definitely changed our lives. Uh, But, you know, it's it's, kind of cool. So did you end up working with your friend? Like, like I did, <laughs> he, he actually didn't uh, continue with the industry. Funny enough, he didn't never made it through hair school. Um, and I kept on going and, you know, I was, had a passion and, uh, you know, I really, then I was like, oh my God, I love this. This is, this is, this is who I'm supposed to be. Um, and kind of where the logo came from, the name came from to, to be bold, be brave, be beautiful, just be, and be who you are and let us create you to be the best person that you can be uh within the salon i love that that's amazing did you um when you were uh when you were in the restaurant business did you have uh did you have any desire to open a restaurant yes yeah that was that was the goal was to to open a restaurant or a wine bar um and instead i opened a a hair salon What do you think it was? I mean, it seems like you were always on 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 pace to be a, to be an entrepreneur to own something. What where do you think that stems from? Uh, it definitely comes from uh, my upbringing. My uh, father owned a graphic design studio uh, in the UK and uh, here, uh, and my sister owns her own graphic design studio uh, here as well. 
Uh, so it's always kind of been in our blood to to lead and to be an entrepreneur and 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 to help people grow in their careers as well. Well, did you did your uh, did your sister or your dad come up with your a uh, very cool logo? Because literally the first thing that I said is when the camera turned on, I go, "Dude, I love that logo." My sister is does all of our graphic design and and created the logo. Yeah, for sure. Shout out, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, Emma Inkpen from Inkpen Studios. Shout out to Emma Inkpen. Yeah, I mean it, it's tight. It's a very, very cool, <laughs> thank you. It's a very, very cool, uh, very cool logo. That, that's pretty cool. Did you? Did, is it? I mean, I'm I'm going in with like U.S. arrogance and stuff, but like, is it is it tough in in Canada? I, I've always heard that it's tougher to own a business in Canada just because of the tax break of the tax uh, uh, implications and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's very different. Um, it's a lot tighter rules and regulations. Um, the tax brackets are a lot higher. Um, employment standards are, are very different. Um, but I mean, if you do it right and you, you know, lead with passion and purpose that, you know, you, you can make a good crack at it. We were closed for 13 months during, during the pandemic. So uh, that was really hard. Uh, we have two businesses. Uh, we actually just sold one of them. Um, but we had two storefronts uh, during all of that lockdown. And, and that was, you know, a complete different story. But um, being able to, you know, make it through and still have great staff and still building a strong message and being one of the leading salons in Toronto, it's, uh, it's great. That's pretty cool. How big is your staff? Uh, so we have seven stylists at Just Be Salon, uh, two juniors, uh, and one front desk. And then we have our management team as well. Oh, that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Did, did, uh, did you guys have in place like the, uh, like the U S like we had the PPP loan, like where the, uh, the government tried to help out these small businesses. Did you guys have the same? Uh, yes, like kind of, yes. It was a struggle to get it. <clears throat> we, <clears throat> sorry. Um, we got assistance based on your year before. So if, if you dropped more than 50% from the year before you would get the assistance and you would get, you have to pay it back. Um, and because it went on so long, they gave an extra bit of a loan and you have to pay that back as well. Um, but because of that year, 2019 was a rough year for my family and I had to focus on helping my mom and my grandma and stuff. Um, and during that time, I actually had a stylist walkout and one of those things. Every, every owner goes through. Oh yeah, exactly. And you know, they moved on to open their own place together. Um, so 2020, our numbers were actually better than 2019 because it was just me and my assistant after the walkout. Oh wow! So we actually looked like we were doing better than we were in 2019. So I actually couldn't apply for the loan. <gasps> so. I, I was, we, uh, we'll get back into the story of Just Be, but uh, I, I had to draw a line in the sand and say, look, I'm not going to go in more than $100,000 in debt just by paying rent to keep the stores here. And we hit 98000 And the, I went to my husband. I was like, I don't, this is it. Like, we're, we're not going to be able to do anymore. And I wrote to the prime minister's office. I wrote to the MP's office. And it was actually the finance minister's office that, read my letter and got back to us and we finally got approved for it because i was like look this is the story so i had to we had to go through all avenues all the way up to the prime minister's office to try and get the loan um but determination and grit and not giving up and here we are today still so wow, that's amazing I don't, yeah like i i'm blown i i think about like our our, our colleagues and like in california and our colleagues in canada and i, and I don't really i don't want to spend a lot of time on COVID. i think we've done enough of that however yeah, totally However, it's like it's always amazing to me that 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 any business was able to stay afloat at all. You mm -hmm. know, like I know I know we were only closed for what like six weeks or something, and and it, it now we were closed for six weeks, but also we had huge client resistance about coming back. You know, Tony and I, our salon is literally right next to NIH, so it's like you know they 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 were on the cutting edge of of, of what this this could have been or what it could be. So you know, I, I think we had a lot of people that just were hesitant to come in. Um, again, a lot of it having to do with proximity. Um, and that you know the people our clientele literally worked on like what the legislation would be kind of stuff. But anyways, that's a whole other. Sure. But, but but it's in, it's it's interesting because it is part of the story though, and. In 2015, we opened the salon. 
So I was trained by John Tacone at um, Navigate Space. And my, my, my story is very different than most. So <clears throat> I, I actually came out of hair school and I rented a chair. So I was working as an assistant during uh, hair school. So I worked at the restaurant four days a week from four o'clock until 2 a.m. And then I went from hair school Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. until uh, 3.30. So they let me leave early because they knew I had to have a job and I had to pay you know, my rent and everything. So I was working in, this, um, in a salon on Saturdays as an assistant. So I did that all the way through hair school. Um, and then I was starting to do my colleagues at the restaurant's hair. I was like, oh, you know, can I, you know, can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah. Um, and then I was working, I literally went into renting a chair, which is completely the wrong way to do it by for everyone out there. <laughs> Get a mentor, train, <laughs> be an assistant. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't. And I was, I was like, oh, you know, two years in of, of renting a chair and just doing what I knew uh, what a long layer was and throwing in some highlights here and there. <clears throat> I remember one time I was doing my boss's hair and uh, I was at the basin and I pulled the, oh, she wanted like low lights and highlights. So I put them in and I remember just pulling them out and it was like zebra stripes of white and black ash of just, and I was like, what have I done? What have I done? <clears throat> and I grabbed one of the stuff, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I grabbed one of the stylists uh that was in the chair and i was like i don't know what i've done and she, he came in and he, he looks at her she's like what's wrong and then and I, we walked out of the shampoo area and he's like what did you do and i was like i don't know um and that's when i realized if i want to grow in this industry i need to take a step back i need to have a mentor and i i'm gonna i'm gonna cap out at this my my, my career is not gonna grow so that's when i actually became an assistant for john and I went and said, okay, you know, let's take a pause on, on the career. And I went to work for John and, you know, I did my odd, odd client, but I worked for him for two years. And during that time is when I was like, okay, this, this is what it's like to have a mentor and, and how to grow. Uh, and that was a big career change for me. And it was hard to then sit, be, take a step back thinking that, you know, what you're doing to then being like, after two years, being like, no, you need to learn more. Um, so I did that. Um, and then he fired me, um, for <laughs> different reasons. Yeah. Um, and then I was, uh, nominated as top, uh, 30 colorist under 30 for the, uh, the colorist magazine. And he read it and he was like, wait a second, <clears throat> let's, let's bring you back. Let's have a conversation. And I went back to work from him again, uh, as a, a junior stylist and then into intermediate and then. That's when, uh, in 2015, is when Just Be was born. And that's when, working for him for several years, I was like, okay, I, I'm ready to branch out on my own. I wanted to create a space where everybody felt equal and uh, gender neutral. So it doesn't, we don't go by uh, gender pricing. We wanted a place for, it doesn't matter who you are, we want to make you feel your best in a place to just be. So that's where the name came from. That's awesome. That's so good. We uh, Tony, uh, he dropped gender pricing a few years ago, and I think kind of what he did was really smart. And actually what he did, and if anyone's listening, what I mean, you can tell the story, but but what he did is like by doing not neutral prices, it actually increased his hourly rate, which is absolutely yeah. for sure. And what was your was your mentor OK with you leaving and opening up just be at the time? No, um, <laughs> it didn't end so well. Um, for the second time, and, it didn't end so well. <laughs> no. And uh, funny enough, now that uh, because of COVID, uh, he closed his salon. Uh, and now we're colleagues again, and he works at Just Be. No, really? Yeah, he's a guest artist here every six weeks. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I get to work with my mentor. My staff get to be around him as well. So uh, kind of the family reunited again. Oh, that is awesome. That's a cool story. Pretty, does he, um, when he comes in, does, uh, does he take uh, any of the younger stylists kind of like, not really under his wing, but like kind of like give them educate the same education that you received? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So he comes in and he works with all of my assistants um, and trains them in a different way than I can. Um, I mean, he's incredible at what he does, the way he can move hair and cut hair. It's just it's I still look up to him uh every day and I look forward to him coming in so 
yeah, it's great. That's pretty cool. Cause I mean, I think, I think, I think just in that there's a lesson there, right? Like this is like the third time kind of together, but like, no matter how like gross it got and like, I, I think we've all been in kind of gross situations, especially when it comes to like leaving salons or I wish the industry could be better at that, but I just don't know if any of us are mature enough to do it. But, um, but, but it, there's a lesson there that, you know, that, that feelings don't have to last forever, you know? I mean, water under the bridge. I mean, life's too short to hold on to grudges. And I, I, I think we've all got time to learn. Uh, we've all, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in your career. Having a mentor, I think, is extremely important. Um, 100%. And different perspectives. I mean, I'm, I'm a left-handed cutter. He's a right-handed cutter. So that's a huge thing for my right-handed uh, assistants and juniors is that they can see it in a different perspective. I remember having to learn from John and I had to watch him in a mirror. So there was a mirror off to the side so I could see, watch in the mirror what he was doing to be able to convert it to a left hand. First off, that's a genius, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> hey, do, you, do you have to have like a, like, like I know like a, a buddy of mine who's left handed, he has to sit in a certain place at the table so he can eat. Do, do, do you have to sit at a certain station so you can work? Or, or are you guys hitting elbows with the person next to you? I have a I have a station, so I, I'm at the end of it, so that the right hand is we don't we don't <laughs> knock into each other. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean it's pretty cocky though, like cocky. going uh, and going to hair school, not even knowing how to to pick up a brush and blow dry, and then when, by the by the end of it, I'm gonna uh, nine months uh, later. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna uh, open up my own sweet studios, rent a chair or a booth. You know, I was like, that's pretty bold. I had a I didn't I mean I didn't do that, but I. I, when I got out of hair school, I worked for a friend that I was in hair school with Waleed and he opened up, uh, this is kind of like, it's called international barbers. And, uh, so right after school, I started working with him and, and, uh, I had this woman come in, uh, crying from a color that I did. I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. And I did the same thing. I, I took, I took a step back and went to apprentice, uh, for the company that I ended up being uh, with for 25 years. But um, yeah, it's, it's crazy when you, when you, when you get into that kind of like that moment, you're like, you, it, it take, it, you gotta be humble. You humble yourself and you, you know what, you know, I do need help. I, I it's right. okay. It's okay for me to go get, seek that help and find that mentor that's going to benefit and, and help me out in my career. You know, what a, here's, sure. a, here's a funny story, Ben, is that, um, when we first started the podcast, we had a hit list of like 20 people and the top person on our list was our mentor. That person that Tony worked for for 25 years was the top person. He's the only person out of our 20 that we haven't gotten on the podcast. <laughs> we, cannot, we cannot land him on the podcast. And all we want to do is a podcast about mentorship and, and how important it is. And like, and, and his name is Reg Law. So I'll give him the love right now. But like what Reggie did is that he had all these stylists and now like, like, I mean, we have the podcast, but I don't put us ourselves in that. But like, <laughs> like, like Philip Wolf, like the great Philip Wolf in LA, he came through that system. He came through the same system. Philip was an assistant in the salon that we worked at before he moved out to LA and became, you know, Mr. LA. And then, and then our friend Lynn, who does all the hair for, he did all the hair for Project Runway and like does, um, he's the hair lead for Tresemme um, during Fashion Week and stuff. So he's got tons of people that have kind of come through his system and we just kind of want to honor that. But for whatever reason, we can't like, he will not come on the podcast man i don't don't be scared of us man we're like the nicest guys ever <laughs> shout out to reggie let's get on here <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. thank you bud thank you so much so um are, are you a are you are you a colorist or are you haircut and coloring we do both so i do i, I do a lot of blondes uh i do a lot of uh I specialize in men's cuts actually grooming um i do a lot of short hair uh so but we do all of it uh at just be we don't we don't specialize I, I get, how did you find your way to like uh to like the fast foil like track or like or like where where was this hole that you saw that that, that needed to be filmed so uh backtrack again uh i was an educator for scruples um oh. at 2010 maybe uh and uh, with that, they were looking for a squad for their Mindy hair crew. Uh, they were launching a new product uh, and then we had to audition for it. So we had to do a video. So uh, I did a video and I was one of the, the six that got picked up uh, as their uh, new squad to, to launch the brand. Uh, and then I had the opportunity of working at New York Fashion Week uh, twice with them, uh, uh, which was an incredible experience. And 
uh, I, I kept on working uh, editorial work, uh, shooting Contessas, and I was introduced to uh, Mark Woolley from Electric London. I don't know if you, if you know Mark, uh, but it, one of my great mentors out of the UK, and he was launching his new product line. So I reached, actually reached out to Mark, and Just Be was the first uh, Canadian salon to carry Electric London. And if you haven't used their products, a huge shout out to Mark and Electric London that their products are amazing, ethically sourced, uh, straight from the UK, uh, a lot of natural ingredients. And uh, I was working at London Fashion Week with Mark. Oh, cool. And uh, I had the opportunity to work with him and, and visit Farmer Court, uh, which is like their head office. And he just opened a new space in London. And it, it's super cool to go check out his electric space uh, in Soho. Uh, I was there last month, actually, and uh, I was working at London Fashion Week, which is where this all came from. And I was working backstage, you guys all know, and as hairstylists, we wear black all day, every day. And I was working backstage and with the lights and the blow dryers and the tools and the people and makeup. And you're, it's crazy back there. And it's, if you haven't experienced it, uh, assist, get back there. It is one of the coolest experiences you will ever get to do in the hair industry. And I just remember being like, why do we wear black? Like, it's just so hot. Like, it's already hot enough back here. And I was like, wait a second. Black absorbs heat. Heat speeds up processing time. And I was like, wait, could, could we manufacture a foil that would be endothermic, that would help speed up processing time? And literally, I was backstage at Fashion Week, and I was like, you know, I finished up, and I was like, I, I get on the plane and I start writing all these ideas down and get to Toronto. And I was like, this has got to exist. I was like, wait a second, this, this doesn't exist. So I started doing more, more market research. And, and I was like, so I started researching different manufacturers that I was like, could we do this? And we, it took about a year. And when 2018 is when all of this started to, to kind of evolve. And I was like, this is, there's no way. So then I, I've, I contacted our uh, original factory and I was like, would this be possible and would this work? And they were like, absolutely, we can do this for you. So I, I did a small run. I think it was like 24, 24 packs. And I was like, so I sent it up here and I did thermal testing and research and development. And we, re we reached out to several different manufacturers and we landed with one out of New Jersey. And when we did the thermal testing and, and testing on mannequins and on strands, and I was like, oh, this actually works. And I was like, I had a business partner at the time. And I was like, Shh, like could we do this? Should we do this? Right. And we're like, okay, let's, let's, let's go all in. And, and that's actually when, where it all started from. And it was just, you know, we, we stored it in the basement here. Uh, and if we got an order on Shopify, we would, one of the assistants would run downstairs and put it into you know the mail and send it out um and then 2019 is when we were you know starting to build and starting to get a few more orders and we're like oh this is really this is really working like this is really cool and uh getting you know a few ambassadors here and there and it was just trickling in very small orders and yeah and then you know 2020 comes along and that's when we were like okay let's this is the year this is the year we're going to do a big launch Boom. <laughs> Industry shuts down. Sure. So, and then that's where, going back to the beginning of our conversation, I had been closed for 13 months. I mean, I went into a spiral as most of us did. And, you know, our sales had completely dropped. There was nothing left. You know, what are we going to do? Do we drop the brand? And I was like, I, you know, worrying about the salons, worrying about the health of the family and all this stuff. And what do we do? And I was like, no, I believe in fast foils and I believe in this brand and I have nothing to do. So instead of sitting at home watching Netflix on the couch, I was like, I'm going I'm to launch this brand again. And when we're out of this, instead of sitting around waiting for the salons to open, I'm like, I've got this small business on the side that has legs and I know it works. So I took the time of being closed and I was like, I'm going to launch fast foils and we're going to come out of this pandemic and we're going to hit it hard. So that's what we did. And uh, my business, I bought my business partner out and he decided to go his, uh, change his career. And so I went to my husband, I was like, can we do this? So we did. And uh, that's when we started the momentum of Fastfalls and where it's come to today.
That's amazing. I mean, I kind of, I kind of teased at the beginning, like when we were in Orlando last year that, uh, well, actually before I get there, I kind of want to, so how did you, um, I heard about fast foils through our dear friend, Jay Ladner. So, yeah. um, so once you, uh, how did you find Jay and, and, and what, and what was that pitch about and, and, and kind of walk me through, um, how you started working with Jay? Yeah. So we, we launched, uh, with our original manufacturer with two different pre-cut sizes. So, uh, for, should we talk about what fast foils is? No, no, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So fast foils are an endothermic foil that will speed up the processing time by a minimum of 25%. It has superior lift capabilities, so you can actually achieve a true net, uh, level 9 lift, level 10 lift. Uh, and it also protects the integrity of the hair because you don't have to use harsh and high levels of developer to achieve those levels of lift or to increase or decrease your processing time. So because of the black, uh, ultra black coating, it will, in a warm environment, when in its incubation period, will speed up that processing time. So um, that's what FastFoils does. And we launched with two uh, sizes. So we had the five by seven and the five by 12, uh, all pre-cut um, with the paper in between and it's a smooth foil. And during that launch period, my husband was like, okay, so I'm gonna start reaching out to a few people. So Rom reached out to, to Jay and he's like, we'd love to you to try their foils. And it, that we're like, okay, we need an ambassadorship program. And so Jay was one of them. And uh, Jay received the foils and he's like, okay, I'm going to try them. And uh, he's like, they, look, they, they work. They're great. It's amazing. He goes, but I, I just, I don't use these sizes. I like bigger foils. And uh, I was like, okay. So I called Jay. I remember I was standing on my, my patio at home and we were having a great conversation. And he's like, look, like, this is great. I think, I think they work, but I, I don't use these sizes I, I i like uh efficiency and i want I, I use bigger foils i was like okay great feedback but you know this is this is what we've got this is what it is right? yeah yeah <laughs> and uh six months later i uh surprised jay with a package i'm like check your mail you've got a shipment and that's when we launched the faster bigger blonder eight by ten and then jay jay calls me he's like what have you done? And I was like, yes, we've, we've given you a bigger foil. And that's when Jay was like, I'm all in. I'm all and uh, that's when our, our friendship and, uh, and that was only, it was late 2021, I think that we did that. And Jay was like, okay, like this is great. So he started using them. And then early 2022 is when uh, I asked Jay, if he, our director of education, and Jay came on board uh, of our director of education because he was like, okay, if these guys can evolve and these guys can uh, create more efficient tools. And one of our biggest platforms is, is our education. We believe in innovation, education, uh, reinvesting back into the industry. And more importantly, it's all about efficiency. And how can we create an education program of teaching stylists how to work smarter, not harder with pattern and placement and efficient tools to be able to generate more revenue behind the chair and create more life balance or whatever that may be, but time is money. And how can we help stylists create more time in their day? That's all. And like Jay's the perfect partner for that because that's kind of, that's, that's always been kind of like what he talks about, you know, as, as far as like placement and like getting, getting more bang for the buck or more bang for the placement, you know? So what a, what a perfect partnership when, when you and your, when you and your husband were talking about like um, ambassador ambassadorships and ambassadors, I, I, I think my question is why did you decide that that was the right way to go? Or, or, or what was the decision about having an ambassador program as opposed to just going out there and, and, and I, I don't know what the word is, but hustle it away. But why, why choose that route as opposed to another route? I think you have more of a global mindset in this and you can, you can hit a, a wider uh, spectrum uh, when you're working with uh, key artists, you're also supporting them, help spread their message. Um, and, you know, as, as a one man band, uh, I could only do so much. And I remember, I literally remember walking into salons and knocking on the door and being like, Hey, do you want to try my foil? Uh, I was, I was the creator. I was, I was the salesperson that I, I, you know, I, I was slugging it on the streets with foil in a backpack. And like, I would like, would you like to try them? I was like, we can't, 
<laughs> I can't continue doing this. Um, and it's about getting the message out. And I think working with, you know, key artists and ambassadors to help spread that message is really important to grow a brand. That's amazing. Okay, back to, to back to my Jay story. So Jay's like, hey, I'm going to be in Orlando and I'd like for you to come. I'm like, cool, where are you going to be? And he's like, I'm going to be at the Fast Foils uh, uh, booth. So, um, you know, I, we talked about it before. Like last year, like again, we're talking about, I mean, almost exactly a year ago from, um, from, from, from this recording. I, I go to the booth and they kind of, and Premier has a way of doing this. They kind of put you in the far corner and it was a small, it was a small little booth. Fast forward to a month ago, when I saw you guys at ABS and like you guys had a big booth, you were front and center and there was so much energy around your, around your, your, uh, your, what word am I for your booth? Right. And I was at other booths around your booth and you had all the attention of the booths that I was in um, with what you guys were doing. So li like we started this thing off, man, it's been incredible to watch kind of your growth and to kind of watch how, you know, fast foils is, no longer the, the proverbial put in the corner. Like you guys are front and center now and, and the industry is talking about you. And, and, you know, to, to bring up the point that Tony made earlier is that I think that only happens because the product works, right? It only happens because in this industry of so many, and we've been in the industry, like Tony mentioned before for 30 years. And like, we've seen every gimmick in the last 30 years. We've seen every, every new comb we've seen every it's funny like we see all these new combs but at the end of the day we use the same old comb <laughs> right like right. there hasn't been a lot of innovation in that but there's always there's always a new comb to be used right and and i guess what i'm trying to say is that in this industry of gimmicks that that your product be had better work if, if the industry's going to buy into it and, and the buzz that's going on with fast flows right now has to be true because it works yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I wouldn't have done everything and invested all of my time, energy, and, and financially. We're, we're self-funded. We, it's been my husband and I to launch this entire brand. We, we have, don't have investors. It's literally just us. And we believe in it that much. But if, if it didn't work, we wouldn't be where we are today, for sure. And the industry wouldn't be recognizing us like we have been recognized over the past year. Uh, but sometimes we have to pinch ourselves and I, I, I messaged Jay a photo the other day and I was like, can you believe that this was only a year ago that we did the collection for fast foils that we shot? I, was, I flew to LA to do, to shoot the, the collection and the pattern and placements. And I was like, that was a year ago, May 8th. And then we've done, you know, we start, just started at uh, Orlando Premier. It's like, let's go, let's, let's, let's have a booth. And we had, like you said, a, a tiny little 10 by 20 and a little stage. And, and we thought, you know, we're like, oh, like, you know, we're put in the corner, but we're like, let's try this. And then we went a month later, we went to ISSE and we had a 20 by 20. We're like, we're going to have a big splash and uh, which was a great show as well. Um, and then this year we go to having a 20 by 40 with a 20 by 20 main stage, uh, six sold out classrooms uh the innovation stage george alderetti uh amber bolt key and neil uh and we were the first well one of the first companies to have three different color lines on our stage bringing everyone together and uniting saying that you can use fast foils with doesn't matter what color line you're using fast foils can help you work smarter not harder and we're celebrating a collaboration that's amazing and i i i, 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 I so that's been so part of our messaging too it's like it's like the 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 uh, and listen you know, we were on a Redken team or a Wella team or whatever, like brand you kind of came up in, you know, and, and those products have done, those companies have done a really good job of creating these, this community really. Right. But it's so nice. And I think the industry is so ready. And I think, I think COVID certainly wants it back to that thing again. I think um, we're going to have all kinds of COVID warnings on our, on this podcast, by the way. Um, but, um, but it, it's done a really good job of like everybody coming together, you know, like, like, like it's not no longer like this brand loyalty or that brand loyalty, like, like as hairstylists, as us, all we want to do is work with the guy next to us. And we don't want any kind of like friction between that. So it's so nice that, that, that there's now products, including fast foils that that's, that's celebrating and supporting that and not just saying like you know we're we're one we're one product or one company thing i i just love that as an industry as a whole thank you yeah i think it's really important i mean why are we working against each other when we can work with each other and it's such a great community and there's so much things that we can learn from each other and collaborate and adapt and it's just to me it's that's where the the industry needs to be going instead of trying to constantly 
uh, work against each other. I think it's a great opportunity that we, you know, we can work with different and collaborate with all these different brands. I, I love like, yeah. um, I love like what Christopher Benson does and, you know, he brings people from every family, you know, and he brings them on the stage together and he, and he spotlights and celebrates, uh, you know, all, all, all these different brands. Like one of the coolest things for us, I guess it was the last year or two years ago when we got to see Sam via and, and Chris um, on stage together was, was really cool because, you know, they were kind of like, from different families and I mean all L'Oreal but they were kind of from different families but to kind of see them on stage as hairdressers and not a, and not as that represented brand to me was just like the coolest thing and again we need the brands we need the manufacturers we need the companies and we all understand that however it's really cool that we can just communicate as hairdressers and totally and that's what I love is that yes we do we do need those brands and we need the support but if we can and the work as artists together on a stage, I think that's, I, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Cause we all share the same message. Exactly. Hey, so you brought up your ambassadors. Um, you've got, you've got a pretty good dream team there um, uh, as well over there at fast forward. How did you guys, what's been your criteria for picking like who, who's going to um, represent fast forwards? You know, it, obviously there's many different things, but uh, the number of followers is not, what we focus on. You can have 100 followers and you can have 200,000 followers. It's not what it is. It's about having passion, purpose, and believing in the product and working with the product. And if you know, we can help a junior in influencer or ambassador in the industry that uh, wants to grow, and we can help them mentorship through how to grow your followers. You know, it's, but it is all about the passion and being able to deliver the message as well. Uh, be bold, be brave, and be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Just be, baby. Just be. That's it. Yeah. I, it, I, anyways, <laughs> I'd step that guy, that one there. Um. So how? So like, how do? Uh, where do people find uh, Fast Foils? You, you guys have yes. a website or on, or on the Instas or? Yeah, so we're Instagram, it's at FastFoils. Uh, through our website, it's uh, FastFoils.ca, uh, represent our, our Canadian heritage. And uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, distribution uh, centers in the U.S., so we have five distributors in the U.S. right now. Uh, so we are uh, in stores, which is great. Uh, but you are all of our information is available at FastFoils.ca. And uh, yeah, check us out. Our Instagram is yeah, always buzzing, so... Was it was it hard to kind of like have like a Canadian and U.S. company? How did how does that happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, <laughs> with the growth of what's happened over the past year, we realized that uh, you know for warehousing and and being have more of a reach. So now we have two two companies. We have a Canadian uh, company that well, then we also have a U.S. company. Uh, and distribution centers and warehousing centers in both. And I mean, tax brackets are different. Uh, legal things are different. And uh, we just kept on going and rolling with it. Like, okay, we have to open a US company. How do we do that? <laughs> okay, call a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we do have two different companies. Did you have to register Fast Foils as a name in the both countries? Yeah, so we were registered for trademarks. We registered for names uh, in, in both. Oh wow! Did uh, what what are some of the uh, big manufacturers? Oh, I guess dis distributors here are in stores. Is it like Salon Centric, Cosmoprof, those type of stores, or? Uh, currently, no. We're in a more smaller boutique. Uh, uh, so we're in Ubli in California. We're in National uh, Salon Resources uh, Midwest, uh, exclusive uh, down in Florida, Atlanta area, and Micello in the uh, Upper East and Twin State. Oh, they're Twin, twin States? States. Yeah, we yeah, we're with. We have one local here, Twin States. Oh, yeah, so uh, if anybody in, in DC wants to check it out, uh, we, uh, we're at Twin State. Oh, oh boy, man. Dwayne. There we go. Yeah. Dwayne, what's up, man? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> we, uh, our distributor is Dwayne, but uh, funny story about Dwayne is, um, Actually, nobody's going to care about this but me. But anyways, <laughs> we, uh, Dwayne and I actually met way back in 1984. So he was like, he was a, he used to manage a clothing uh, store. And then 
he kicked us out actually he's a couple years older than us so he was like that big 18 year old manager at a clothing store and he used to kick us out of the uh, out of the clothing store we came in there to create havoc and then uh one day i was working in a salon and he walked in i was like bro what are you doing here i i had the opportunity to kick him out of the salon Dwayne and i are, are are pretty good buddies man and like uh representing uh twin states there but now he's a great dude too so shout out to Dwayne Moorhead if he's listening. Yep. You know? Yeah. So um, that's really. But if you if 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 you if you want to check out the product and and there's not a local distributor, um, that's uh, fastfalls.com or fastfalls.ca. Fastfalls.ca, and we do uh, have an online education platform where we teach all of our patterns and placements on demand. Uh, mm -hmm. And we do live uh, education once a month. Actually, today we're Jay and I are doing a live, uh, which will be amazing. Um, we're doing one of our patterns and placements as well. But all of that does live on the the website. So education, information on the product, uh, and if you're using a local distributor, it is available to purchase as well at fastwells.ca. CA, so, yeah, got to say dot CA. Yeah. Got I, I have CA. to. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm going to end up putting dot com and like confuse. Like, dot CA. I know. <laughs> exactly. How do you and Jay decide what the uh, what the placement and stuff are going to be? Sorry. Like, like if you like when you and Jay talk, how are you? How do you guys decide what's going to be? Um, like what the placement's going to be and stuff. So it, it's about efficiency, always uh, making sure that we can work smarter, not harder. And you know, what are the trends? You know, is it the money piece? Is it is it we're looking for depth? Are we looking for coverage? Um, so him and I you know, we talk pretty much every day. Uh, bless our husbands that let us just gab like two old women for hours. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, obviously trends is, is an important thing. Uh, we're, we're looking at our new collection and what we're going to be doing and our new product launch that's coming out in uh, Q3, um, which we're super excited about, which I can't drop too much about, but um, uh, we do have some, some interesting and fun uh, things coming down the pipeline. Um, but yeah, so it's just, you know, passing on ideas back and forth of, of trend setting and stuff like that. That's very, 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 very cool. And uh, oh. if you go into the hair shows, uh, Fast Forward, they're going to have a presence there. I know that they're going to be in Orlando this year, right? And, uh, yeah. and like I said, they were just at ABS. And um, actually, I want to take this moment just to uh, shout out Frank Falco, because I think like when he took over uh, ABS uh, in the in the height of the thing that we talked enough about on this podcast, like you know he was in a, he was in a tight spot, but man, ABS was just such a powerhouse this year. Like I can't, I I can't I. I I just can't even explain to you. It was the first hair show that I feel like the energy and everything was back um, since, you know, before 2020 there. And just a huge uh, shout out to Frank and his team and those guys over there. Cause um, it was just an amazing show. It, it felt really good to be back there. Way to go for it. It really was. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, like all the manufacturers were like happy with it. Like, Oh, people are here. I mean, we were there, we were there on Monday and it felt like a Saturday. Like it was totally packed. You know, yeah. like usually Mondays, like you're like, doo -doo -doo, like, you know, crickets or something, you know, a lot of times not, not this year, man, it was packed. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but you know, Frank, you did an awesome job with that. All right. Hey Ben, so before we jump off here, how, um, is there anything new coming on? I mean, you guys have, you guys seem to be always innovating. Is there anything new that's coming? Yeah. So actually we just launched two new products to our portfolio. We talked about our pre-cuts um earlier with how with jay's innovation and everything so we took that one step further and we listened to artists that said you know we don't we don't love pre-cuts so we actually launched in november uh the a five pound five inch roll so now you can do uh maximum length with a five inch but we're taking it one step further and taking jay's brain and my brain and combining it together for the roll lovers and we're the first company to launch an eight inch wide roll. So you get maximum efficiency, you get maximum width coverage, but now you can do maximum length. And that's incredible uh, for if you're doing freehand exposure and you need to incubate and you wanna get through those, those underlying pigments of a level six in that mid shaft area. Or if you've got super long hair and you wanna be maximum efficiency, you can then cover from, the back, from ear to ear in the back and it's disrupting the industry. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out at, uh, on our website, but uh, there's been every uh, media outlets been covering it. So. Oh, that's really cool. So it, it does it come in a box? It, 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 it like rolls out of, out of the box and is there like a tear? How does it work? Help me out. 
Yeah, absolutely. So it's just like your traditional foil box, uh, but eight inches wide, it's two pounds. So you just pull it out. It has a cutter and yeah, maximum length. Yeah. That's so cool. Especially like, the, like, you know, with, with a lot of the balayage looks and stuff, if we're not open, you know, if we're not doing them freehand, we can kind of like fold them up in a foil. That's amazing. Yeah, so it, it has the endothermic technology. So it'll help speed up your processing time, but then also now we're dealing with maximum length, which is great. Oh, that's cool. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to uh, go to the website and get some of that. Cause uh, I, I, I love a good role there, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Enough of all that stuff, Ben, once again, where can people find you? Give us all the stuff and all the, all, all that stuff, all the Instagrams, all of your Instagrams, anything. Yeah. So my, my Instagram is Ben underscore Barkworth. Uh, and I have uh, Barkworth bespoke beauty, which is more of my editorial and uh, that side of my industry. Uh, but fast foils, you're available at uh, fast www.fastfoils.ca, and uh, our Instagram handle is <laughs> uh, fast foils. So check us out. We uh, excited to hear everyone's you know share us on your stories. We're, we love seeing everyone's success with the the fast foils. So. Well, we appreciate you, brother, and we're going to check you out on on the live uh, with Jay later. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we're and, definitely. Uh, and then we'll see you in person in Orlando. Yeah, you would definitely be in person. Well, one of us will be in person or in Orlando, right. but uh, you know, somebody else is going on vacation that week or something. That's okay. <laughs> Mr. Ben Barkworth, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thank you for joining us on your day off. All right, gents. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.